Over the past 10 years, cyber attack methods have evolved, but the origins of cyber attacks are rooted in the search for a way to hack into banks and financial institutions to defraud clients and steal money. However, in recent years, hacking has become a serious weapon used by terrorist organizations to target adversaries. في مثلا اشخاص اللي الهدف تاعهم هو فقط تخريب المواقع مثلا عشان يعمل يعطيك مسج سياسي مثلا يروح على موقع اسرائيلي نزله ويحط مثلا تحيا فلسطين ولا شيء هيك في بعض الافراد مثلا اللي بيحاولوا انهم يسرقوا اسرار الدوله How are the targets of these attacks chosen? Could countries respond to foreign cyber attacks with their own cyber attacks? Is it possible that wars between states will be fought not on the ground, but on the computer screen in the future? To learn about how cyber attacks have evolved, we headed first to the prestigious University of Oxford, specifically the Alan Turing Institute for Data Science and Artificial Intelligence. These fields are all considered to be key disciplines of data science, artificial intelligence, and computing today. During the Second World War, Turing developed a machine that helped break the German Enigma communication code, which was credited with the subsequent defeat of the German Nazi army. Cyber warfare occurs when we're trying to do some major damage, whether digital or physical, to um, the target state. Uh, so this excludes forms of cyber terrorism, when cyber terrorism is now run by state, but also uh, criminal um, action. Since the end of the Second World War, states have fought between one another for influence, whether through direct combat on the battlefield or through longer wars of attrition, such as the Cold War between the United States and Russia. These wars have claimed the lives of many innocent civilians, and as a result, some countries have risen and others have fallen. However, a plethora of technological and cultural developments emerged at the beginning of the new millennium, changing the tools of combat from fighter planes and intercontinental missiles to simple and quick clicks on a computer keyboard. These new tools evolved rapidly and were soon capable of destroying entire countries' infrastructure, paralyzing their economies and the livelihoods of citizens, but with little to no direct loss of civilian life. A group claiming to be Iranian hackers taking responsibility for the hack of a federal library website over the weekend. The U.S. energy grid. The hackers first gained access to small energy-related well, companies. Of thousands of British Airways passengers have had their bank details stolen in one of the biggest data breaches to hit a U.K. company. In 2017, cyber attacks peaked as thousands of institutions and individuals were targeted. More than 75,000 attacks were detected in 99 countries in what was considered the largest piracy operation in modern history. Hackers sought to extort their targets for money, and American and British authorities urged those targeted not to pay the ransoms, requesting them to update their information security programs and electronic antivirus programs. At the time, the electronic attacks also targeted the UK's National Health Service, or the NHS. The attacks paralyzed computers in many hospitals across the country. While the NHS administration tried to reassure people about the safety of its system, escalating attacks led to confusion and chaos in many hospitals. As a result, medical procedures were canceled or delayed, and ambulances were sent to other hospitals. The British National Centre for Electronic Security announced, We are aware that these attacks on emergency services have a major impact on patients and their families. We are making every effort to restore regular work procedures in these vital sectors. Computer screens at public health facilities displayed messages saying, Your files have been encrypted, and asked recipients to make $300 Bitcoin payments as ransom. This series of attacks prompted the British government to establish special security agencies whose primary concern is cybersecurity. The new agencies would defend the country from future potential attacks, or, in extreme scenarios, allow for the government to carry out attacks against terrorist groups or hostile countries. لانه الحشم الاضرار برات بيكون يعني نفسه زي اضرار يعني حرب عاديه لانك فيك مثلا تشل المنشات النوويه فيك مثلا تقطع التيار الكهربائي فيك انك مثلا تعمل اضرار بالمنشات التحتيه وتسرق اسرار اللي هي مهمه كثير 
فلهيك يعني الدول الحين صارت اهميه لتعطي للحجمات الالكترونيه على حد سواء الاهميه اللي بتعطيها للتراديشنال يعني الحجمات العاديه عن طريق الجو او عن طريق البرد To develop offensive cyber capabilities, Britain has established several government defense centers that aim to collect information should such an attack be deemed necessary. When we're thinking about uh, cyber warfare and intelligence, the two main ones we have to consider are GCHQ, which is the UK Signals Intelligence Agency, and the Ministry of Defense. Each security and intelligence services body that deals with cyber attacks has different levels of interaction. Coordination between such bodies and agencies takes place within a clear framework that defines the function of each and the limits of its interference. في بريطانيا في ادراك لضروره التعامل مع الهجمات السبرانيه بطريقه كثير اذا بدك واضحه، الهجمات السبرانيه بدك اول شيء تعرف هي من وين عم تجي شو هي اهدافها وشو هي افضل طرق الرد عليها فالهجوم السبراني اللي صار على البرلمان البريطاني كان نفسه اللي صار على البرلمان سكوتلند الهاكرز اللي كان منسوبين لحرس الثوري الايراني بعضهم نسبهم للعمليات الروسيه عملوا طريقه سهله لاختراق البرلمانيين انهم حاولوا مجموعه هائله من كلمات المرور ضد ايميلات البرلمانيين ونجحوا انهم يتوصلوا لاكثر من 90 ايميل ل 90 برلماني بريطاني وهون المصيبه انه كانت الكلمات المرور سهله الوصول اليها يعني كانوا ناس بيستعملوا باسورد واحد اثنين ثلاثه او يعني اسمهم الشخصي The December 2018 attack targeted members of parliament and politicians mobile phones and aimed to steal the individual's data Britain's National Cybersecurity Centre stated it was aware of a cyber incident that affected some organizations in the United Kingdom toward the end of 2018, and that it was working with victims, providing them with advice on mitigation measures. The analysis conducted by California's cybersecurity experts concluded that a group linked to the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps was responsible for this attack as well as a similar attack against the parliamentary network in 2017. Around the world, countries reformed their defense strategies and created agencies dedicated to cybersecurity, and this decision was not random. The root of the global changes can be traced back to Estonia. In April 2007, the Estonian government decided to change the location of a Soviet-era memorial in the country's capital, Tallinn. The decision ignited a wave of protests in the streets of one of the former Soviet republics that left one civilian dead and 156 injured. But the real reaction was not on the streets of Tallinn, but was rather on another battlefield. Later that month, on April 27th, Estonia was subjected to a major and systematic attack on its government websites, as well as its electronic infrastructure, which paralyzed its banking systems and caused its internal communication systems to fail. That incident was described as the first cyber war. But the main question remained, who was behind the attack? Everything pointed to Russia, or at least more accurately, ever, everything pointed to Russians. Um, who were uh, rebelling against the Estonian government's decision to uh, perform what they saw as being an anti-Russian activity. Uh, in that case, the forensics around the incident uh, do not point specifically to any one member or, or level of the Russian state itself, but simply to interested pro-Russian uh, individuals who had the technical capabilities to perform these types of attacks. Despite the fact that countries from all over the world, especially advanced countries, invest hundreds of millions of dollars to develop both their cyber defensive and offensive capabilities, these countries still hire private companies and institutions, thus relying on them to run this mission. I think it's going to be an area in which, let's say, the demand of the market is going to expand uh, more and more. So cyber contractors are useful from the state perspective, let's say because they give access to cutting edge expertise and technologies, which states might not have the time to um, grow, develop, or, or acquire internally. 
These companies rely heavily on employing individuals who have experienced hacking and are professionals in the field of cybersecurity breaches. Some may even have a criminal record. These experts are called ethical hackers. لو بدك تأمن بيتك من اللصوص أسهل طريقة إنك يعني تدفع لص وتخليه يعني يحاول يخترق لك بيتك لأن هو يعني أهم أو أولى إنه يعرف شو هي الثغرات اللي عندك في البيت أو الطرق المتعددة للدخول لك فنفس المبدأ تقوم به يعني بمجال الأمن السبراني الشركة أنا اللي عملتها هون بدبي هذا يعني شغل الشاغل إنه عندنا مجموعة من الهاكرز أو القراصنة الأخلاقيين اللي كان عندهم ماضي إجرامي يعني بيعرفوا يخترقوا الابلكيشنز او المؤسسات او النتوركس اند ويب سايتس فبنستعمل هالقدرات اللي عندهم عشان نخترق الكلاينتس بتاعنا بعدين بنفرجيهم وين الثغرات الامنيه اللي عندهم. On the other hand, cybersecurity companies are not only interested in securing corporations and public institutions. Many of them also carry out cyber attacks on behalf of individuals and other countries, and some even sell electronic weapons that anyone can use to cause electronic harm. إنه مرات في بعض الدول اللي يعني ما فيها تعمل هجمات إلكترونية أو شغل بال على المستوى الإلكتروني اللي ممكن يكون يعني في علاقة لهم بهالموضوع يعني زي ما بنسميها يعني black ops يعني black operations. فمرات بيستعملوا بشركات خاصة عشان يعملوا هالشغل فحتى لو في انكشاف لهالعمليات ما يتم يعني لوها على حكومة معينة أو على جهة حكومية معينة يتم لوها على شركة خاصة. Relying on these private companies has prompted many questions, especially in the absence of a clear legal framework, whether local or international, that regulates relations between countries and companies in cyber domains. Where technology giants like Google play a major role in the global digital world, these issues become especially complex. Experts warn that more cases could arise, like that of Cambridge Analytica, that used individual personal data to influence electoral sentiment in the 2016 U.S. presidential elections and also tried to influence Britain's referendum vote to leave the European Union, popularly referred to as Brexit. It's it's a very so the one of cyber contractors. It's a very problematic, um, let's say, dynamic that is being established there uh, for two reasons. Internally, in, in terms of a you know a force deploying this kind of service, um, we don't have the right means of governance yet. How do we establish oversight of these contractors? Uh, where is the accountability? Um, what kind of information we share with them? How do we um, deal the uh, um, the connection, what is the procurement, what are the, 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 pro- the policies that are supporting this interaction. In less than 10 years since the attack on Estonia, the world has become increasingly digital and more dependent on artificial intelligence. Most Western countries and some Arab countries hold data on their citizens on digital databases, including their domicile and or their tax numbers and banking information. In light of the growing technical developments, there is a vital need to protect this data, even from the state's own bodies. كل شيء نحنا عندك محطوط على الإنترنت وعلى الأونلاين لآخره عندك كتير بيانات والعالم يعني شفنا بالكاميرج أناليتيكا كيف استعملوا بيانات العالم لحتى إذا بدك يأسروا بقراراتها يأسروا كيف تنتخب يأسروا كيف تفكر الآخري. سو الفكرة إنه العالم صار عنده أكتر نشاط على الإنترنت هذا موضوع على طول بحط أكيد ريسك أكبر على قد بيعرفوا عنك قد في في تبغى خصوصيات خصوصياتك الآخري. هلا بس دولة مثل بريطانيا دولة فيها إذا بدك يعني حكم القانون فيها مؤسسات فيها قوانين تضمن إلى حد كبير حريات الشخصية أو أو الحقوق الإنسان. This comes down to how the relationship between a state and its citizens is defined. But what organizes cyber relations between countries? Who has the ability to classify a cyber attack against another country as a hostile act that could lead to a declaration of war? There was a major attempt, attempt which ran for 15 years at UN level to come up with some form of uh, international agreement on what could be the principles regulating state behavior in cyberspace, uh, and they failed a few years ago, and we haven't resumed any attempt uh, at that level uh, yet. 
There is a fine line between what is considered a hostile cyber attack that could be equated to an act of war and an attack of sabotage that occurs on a daily basis. And there is no designated international body with a mandate to tackle this issue. The reason why we don't actually want necessarily to, to define these thresholds is because once you've drawn a red line, it allows all other states to know precisely what they can do short of that red line. Behind the United States and Russia, China ranks third in its electronic and cyber capabilities. As Britain entered into contracts with the Chinese company Huawei to build 5G communications networks, a dispute broke out between Britain and the United States as the latter objected to the agreement, saying it would threaten Britain and NATO's security capabilities. إذا بنرجع شوي لورا المملكة المتحدة بريطانيا هي يمكن أكثر دولة برات الصين بتعرف هواوي بتعرف البرودكتس تبع هواوي أكثر من أي دولة ثانية. بريطانيا أنشأت بأول الـ 2000 مركز خاص بأوكسفورتشر يعنى بأنه مراجعة السكيورتي تبع البرودكتس تبع هواوي، يعني هيدا موضوع زمان وهن بيعرفوا وفايتين إذا بدك بتفاصيل Britain made the decision on the Huawei contract despite objections from its greatest ally, but according to British sources, the decision was almost unavoidable. So when you go back through the G's, if you like, from 5G to 4G to 3G, Huawei has always had a very, very large footprint. And it's not easy just to switch from one supplier, Huawei, to another like Samsung or Ericsson. Um, so in a sense, the UK was almost inevitably going to have to allow Huawei to have some role in its 5G net network. Um, and there's a certain, there's an historical component to that that's simply unavoidable. One cannot rule out the possibility that future technological development might lead to the development of cyber weapons that could cause greater casualties and damage than conventional weapons. Such weapons would no longer be used to only steal medical and scientific information. Uh, the most common one is probably that a cyber attack would enable an attacker to switch off, for example, a transport network, trains crash, cars collide on the roads, aircraft fall out of the skies if you attack the uh, air traffic control system, chemical plants explode when their um, uh, industrial control systems uh, go offline or cease to function properly. Arab countries, in general, may not be far off from being subjected to cyber attacks where human lives are lost. Many countries have already been attacked, albeit with no fatalities. فالهجمات الإلكترونية اللي بتودي بحياة أشخاص وأفراد هذا حيصير يعني واقع حنعيشه كل يوم. في بعض الهجمات الإلكترونية اللي وصلت لها الحد يعني اللي هاجمت يعني مؤسسات أو منشآت حيوية من قبل زي مثلاً المنشآت النفطية السعودية اللي تم الهجوم عليها السنة اللي فاتت وتم يعني الهجوم على كومبوننت معين بتاع الأويل ريك اللي يعني بمسؤول عن 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 توازن البريشر او او الضغط في حيث وكان يعني على ون كليك اواي زي ما قالت الشركه السعوديه انه حيث يعني يحدث انفجار في هال في هالمكون فهذا يعني انفجار اللي كان يقدر يدي ويودي بحياه يعني افراد واشخاص نفس الشيء مثلا من صار يعني الهجوم على الالكتريكال جريد بتاع اوكرانيا من طرف روسيا فانت لما توقف يعني الكهرباء على بلد كامل وهالكهرباء يعني بتستعملها مستشفيات ليعني امور حساسه لابقاء الناس يعني الايف فهيدا يعني اندايركتلي انت يعني بتصير يعني تقتل ارواح او تقتل ناس. The virtual wars around the globe revolve around cyberspace and computers. These might develop into smart bombs and missiles that can shoot down human victims without firing a single shot. The digital weapons may not emit smoke and may not explode, but instead, they can sow silent destruction and spy with malice. This is indeed the weapon of the 21st century. For now, though, this is a weapon of bloodless wars.